Visiting with Steve James, the founder of Kenya Relief. Steve, let's talk about mm -hmm. what's going on today. This has been 17 years mm -hmm. since you went for the first time. Describe the village and the <clears throat> medical facilities today. Well, it's been 14 years. It was 17 okay, 14. since Brittany started, okay. and then I went. Um, yeah. Well, we've come a long way. You know, yeah. we've. Uh, I remember the first team out of Coleman, seven people went, and we were. You know, we had no bathrooms, we had no showers, we had, it was very primitive. The administrator of the hospital had, that was his house that we were staying at. So, um, but it's come a long way. You know, we bought four acres of land mm, 11 years ago, and then 17, then 40, and so now we own 60 acres. It's paid for. Okay. And we've got a drone view that everybody should see um, of our compound. We've built, you know, 25 buildings and we have uh, 70 employees, Kenyans, and we have missionaries on the ground from Huntsville and Arkansas and Atlanta, and they work as our hospitality management team along with the 70, and we do, you know, we have the big medical surgical outreach. That's our biggest outreach, and we have 23 teams this year going, up to 24 people. Actually, I'm taking 28 people in May. To, to do medical surgical specialties like the big goiters and hernia, you know, everything. We do peds team, cataracts. And then we have the school, which was open right. two and a half years ago, which was a church-sponsored project from Florida. And we started with uh, just a few kids, and now we have 510 in, school. in two and a half years. We've added three classrooms already, and we need to add two more tomorrow. But we have 300 on the waiting list. Oh, wow. So in that school, we have all your affluent children from aff excuse me from affluent families yeah. that go to school with a hundred orphans that live at our place. So we have 179 children that we take care of in the orphanage or in extended home care or in college or boarding school. So, uh, but a hundred live on site and they go to school with all these other kids. So you have an interesting blend of kids who've struggled all their life, who've had trauma and all kinds of terrible experiences, lost both their parents, going to school with all these other kids. So they, they're on the level playing field. What's the area, what's the name of the area? Magori, Kenya. It's southwest Kenya. Can you find it on the map? You, if you go to, it's in the corner. If you go between you know, the corner of Tanzania and Lake Victoria, you'll see Magori. Okay. Okay. Um, it's a very safe, I, I tell you, I have to take the opportunity. Most people, in, at least in, that I see around here, they're just scared to death to go anywhere and do anything like that because they think they're going to get their head chopped off or they're going to get Ebola. And I tell you, the news media has done a terrible, terrible injustice to the poor in Africa with their reporting because even though you hear these sensational things that go on, it's just like here. I mean, we have more school shootings than anybody in the world. You know, uh, you, there's parts of Birmingham you wouldn't go to. Mm -hmm. And when you go to Kenya, it's the same way. You just don't go into bad neighborhoods. You know, you go with smart people and you take care of yourself. And so people should not fear going to a third world country. When you talk about affluent families, mm -hmm. how do they make their money? Well, you know, the, the Magori is the county seat. So there's lots of money coming to Kenya. Kenya's improved so much since the new constitution. So now all your lo local communities are, have local governments, not just a central government. And so money's being dispersed to help people. It's made huge progress in Kenya. So when I say affluent people, it would be government people's children, businessmen, you know, I mean, they have the necessities there. Right. So yeah. mattresses and, you know, soap and so you have a salesman that you know a business district okay um the fish industry is fairly big there so you have some people that earn their living that way uh -huh. tell us about the hospital well our hospital mm -hmm. uh, well we have a outpatient surgery center we've we're specializing in you know surgery like bringing specialists from all over the country especially ent head and neck and um, general surgery, but are there I, I, physicians on staff full time? We have a clinical officer, we're like a nurse practitioner that's Kenyan full time, a pharmacist, a nurse, and we're mm -hmm. expanding. Okay. But as we build our facility, like we're about to add on, we're doing a fundraiser now to add on in, in inpatient beds. 
so that we can actually collect some insurance money and make you know become profitable because okay. there is a government you know the Kenya government tries to provide health insurance for their mm -hmm. people um, it's just struggles with the resources so that's something we're in the process of doing and um, our hospital mostly we, we see patients every day but most of it's when the teams are there like the team that just left from Henry Ford they saw 490 four patients in three days mm -hmm. and they did 67 operations in three days. How do you let the people, the natives, know uh, what, what's, oh. what's being done? Well, we, we advertise. We do radio announcements. We okay. do flyers. We put newspaper. We, we pass out uh, every time okay. those 450 went home or 480 with our schedule. So okay. they know when teams are coming, and then okay. we network through the churches. So like our pastor's conference, we had 1,500 pastors from 97 denominations come. And so all those pastors went home with information about what we do. Uh-huh. Yeah. How far are people traveling oh to come? Oh, my God. You wouldn't believe it. We have, people, we have people that travel eight hours by bus or motorcycle to come. All day. Oh, yeah. And they spend the night for days waiting on their surgery and sometimes they get turned away because we can't do all of them. We cannot begin to do all of them. But we do what we can. We work 12 hours a day, 13 hours a day. Wow. What are the most common medical needs? Well, you know, have? historically in Africa it's always been, the emphasis has been on HIV, AIDS, TB, and malaria. That's right. the big killers. Uh -huh. And that's who everybody's been interested in, what they've been interested in. But now the new sustainable development goals, which 100 countries put together, um, have identified surgery, anesthesia, um, biomed, and training as four real important areas that need to be invested in over the next 15 years. So what we're doing is so timely because 11% of all the disease load in the world is, is, a, is fixable by surgery, all that pain and suffering. That's a big percentage that's neglected. And we're on the cutting edge. We are doing fantastic work with our 20-something teams a year. Oh, it's, it's immeasurable. What's the most common surgeries oh, I'm sorry. that are needed? Uh, now would be, well, we sit, for some reason we're getting goiters. We get gigantic wow. goiters, like we get hundreds and hundreds of them. Um, and what's the cause of that? Well, that's kind of controversial. There's some malnutrition. There's some iodine deficiencies. There's, I think something behind it, though, and, and their diet, there's some certain foods that can affect the thyroid function. But I think the primary thing is that you see cases where they go 10 and 20 years without treatment. Oh. So they go to the doctor, he either, they either don't have the money to fix it or they didn't get seen properly or something, but the, the goiter grows and grows and grows and grows, you know. It would be taken care of when it was this big here. So, so these are mostly adults? Adults, yeah, all the, all the goiters we've done were adults. Now we do have a PEDS team that goes twice a year and they focus on, you know, they do hernia surgeries and, you know, any number all adenoidectomies, different things. We've got an ear surgeon going here pretty soon to work on some kids, too. Very good. I have a few more questions, but that's going to save for another interview where we're going to talk about some really exciting things that have happened recently. Oh, yeah. Steve James with Kenya Relief.